Serbia. Every edgy 15 year old's favorite Slavic nation, where every meal is just a slab of meat so fatty it will clog your arteries in 15 seconds, and every other sentence is something about Kosovo, a really magical place on earth. Indeed, the country has generated a reputation like no other. However, there are far more stereotypes that meet the eye, and as a person who has spent 13 years of their life in Serbia, an equivalent of an entire lifespan in Chernobyl, I find it my duty to educate you, lost little sheep, on all the stereotypes from this country. So you too can make better memes on Reddit and I can actually see something funny for once in my life on that site. So without further ado, let's begin. When it comes to Belgrade, it is essentially a microcosm of everything and everyone in Serbia at the same time. While different parts of the country are stuck in different ages, Belgrade is at the same time in the Stone Age as it is in the Medieval Age, 20th century, 21st century, 26th century, and anything and everything in between. People from all across the country flock here en masse, despite if they were asked for their opinion on the city, they would say they wished it disappeared in a nuclear hellfire. It is hard to pinpoint the exact stereotype of someone from Belgrade because of this diversity and there being so many people from different walks of life. As such, the population has to be further categorized. First, you have the original Belgrader whose family has inhabited the city since Moses split the Red Sea and he can't stop talking about it. They are usually stereotyped as being pretentious and thinking that they are better than everyone else, trying to act in a pseudo-aristocratic and pseudo-intellectual fashion. And maybe they'd have something to stand on if they weren't living in fucking Belgrade. Right. <laughs> They claim to love the city, but at the same time hate it because um, rednecks like you came from Svilainets and ruined their precious metropolis. They're pretentious and every breath they take to speak is a breath you will be miserable. Then you have the liberal Belgrader. Now they are usually some severely undernourished lanky 20 something year olds that came from some bumfuck village you never heard of and their entire personality revolves around how much they love the EU and talking shit on how barbaric and uncivilized Serbia is compared to it. Their free time is spent volunteering in NGOs that are saving puppies from cancer or cats from ketamine. It doesn't really matter as the NGOs usually a money laundering scheme in the first place but their vegan diet undernourished their brain too much for them to realize. If there's a protest in the city you won't have any trouble finding them. Thus try and avoid any political rallies otherwise be prepared to hear some of the worst political takes of your life. You also have the block dweller. Now, the block dweller, as per his name, can be found usually in New Belgrade in the comic blocks as his name suggests. He is under the impression that he is the main character from 8 Mile and that he grew up and still lives in the projects, despite living in a country that's literally safer than France. Bruh. He usually works as a mechanic or in one of the main bakery chains such as Skros Dobra Pekera or Klebi Kifle and deals funny nose powder and le funny plant on the side so he can buy that BMW 320 with over 280,000 kilometers. He's usually a good guy but relishes in the Doomer aesthetic too much. Then there is the Starlet. The Starlet is usually a young girl anywhere between the ages of 18 to 29. They are identifiable by dressing like a Russian mail order bride trying to resemble class but just ends up looking like what white trash would dress in if they had money and thought it was chic. Their entire lives consist of going to expensive clubs in the city and taking weekend trips to Dubai just so they can post pictures from there and get street cred from other starlets. Of course this is never on their own dime, rather either their father with a semi-successful private company pays for it or their wannabe gangster boyfriend who gets his money from god only knows where. If she happens to have a job, it is exclusively in some field of finance where she never goes to work without a full face of makeup and barely makes 600 euros a month. Last but not least, you have the eternal student. The eternal student is in the seventh year of his third year of university and is no closer to graduating than Ian Miles Chong is to ever stepping foot in the US. The homeless guy at Zeleny Vanitz lives better than him 
as the only food he can afford to eat is the condom wrapped sausage in the public cafeteria and whatever his parents sent him from his town that month. They study all day but magically fail all their exams whenever they collect enough money to apply to take them during exam season. At night you can find him at the student park getting drunk with his colleagues off a 2 liter bottle of beer and a vodka bottle they all pitched in to get. But you know what's always affordable? Private internet access baby! Using the internet without a VPN is like cheating a Mexican cartel of its money. You just don't do it. Whenever you're out and about on the internet, your device is always transmitting a bunch of your information that can be viewed by a bunch of unwanted eyes and ears. And that's where private internet access comes in. Where they hide your IP address and protect your connection by encrypting your data, making it impossible for unwanted viewers to see. And with private internet access's world-class server infrastructure, your data is untouchable. What makes private internet access so amazing is that they never ever record or use your data and you can use it on unlimited devices. So with just one subscription, your entire house is protected. So don't waste any time. Go and click my link in the description and grab an 83% discount, making the entire service just $2.03 a month, with four months extra for absolutely free. Streaming services also love geolocking content from you based on your country for God knows what reason. But with one click with private internet access, that's a thing of the past. Just look at Netflix. Bada bing bada boom, Rick and Morty. And if you don't like the service, no problem, you have a 30 day money back guarantee and 24 7 customer support. So again, go to piavpn.com slash Europe and protect yourself right now. If ancient Greece was known amongst the world for its homosexual activities in antiquity, Novi Sad is known for it in modernity. Scientifically speaking, every third person Novi Sad falls somewhere on the LGBTQ spectrum, while the other two are either an e-girl or an e-boy. Everyone in the city has a superiority complex thinking that they are better than Belgrade and love nothing more but to shit talk the white city, even though Belgradians don't even think about them. The Novi Sad citizen has it in his head that somehow Novi Sad is this epicenter of culture, arts, architecture and whatnot and is so much more different from the rest of Serbia even though 98% of it is commie blocks like the rest of the country. It's a huge student town because of which some like to call it Serbian Athens but um, as I said before others like to call it that for uh, different reasons. But if you're ever gonna hear the worst political take of your life it's gonna be here. Also if you're ever looking to taste decent food avoid the city like the plague as they can't make a proper pjeskavica even if Gordon Ramsay himself was giving them the freshest ingredients and telling them the recipe himself. One of the more notable subcultures within the city is the alt girl, also colloquially known as the alt kuya. The alt kuya can take many shapes, but usually she likes to dress as a goth or emo or whatever it is that nerds on Discord think is hot this week. Her entire personality is that she is not like the other girls, meaning she smokes worse than a chimney, takes more pills in one party than all the Vicodin Dr. House took in one entire season, and posts edgy Hello Kitty memes on her Discord. She likes anime, but again, she's not like the other filthy anime casuals, because her favorite are Berserk, Evangelion, and Serial Experiment Lane. I know, she is so quirky and dark, isn't she? All in all, if you're a young guy who moved here for your studies, avoid her like the plague and you'll be fine. I know your instinct tells you you need her as a girlfriend, but just trust me on this, don't. Now, although Novi Sad is the capital of Vojvodina, Serbia's northern province, the people there are not representative of the region overall. The main stereotype of Vojvodinians is that they are lazy and take too long to pronounce words. Not because they were dropped on their heads, they're just born that way. Because of their accent, they are prime targets of being made fun of as they elongate their vowels in quite the humorous way. <laughs> If they happen to live in the north, they are most likely either of two things, a Hungarian or a smuggler, or a Hungarian smuggler. The Hungarians of Vojvodina are usually stereotyped as being able to barely speak Serbian. If they do, they usually have an even thicker accent and can't get the gender of a word right even if their two-year-old child's life was on the line. Koliko ste konzirvirati u mesec dana?
However, if they wear an excess of Adidas tracksuits and expensive in appearance, but once you actually research the cost, they're kind of cheap watch, and drive cars that would put Andrew Tate's collection to shame, then they're a smuggler who utilizes the inadequacies of the Serbo-Hungarian border to their full extent. Their entire family runs a shipping company and they know the ins and outs of the import and export laws better than any lawyer walking this earth. If you need anything, and I literally mean anything, they're the person to call. <laughs> Здраво свима, я съм Сол Гудман. И сте ли знали да мога да вам пренесам шта вам треба? Знаю граничници, знам я. Верувам ако може да се сакрие, може да се пренесе. Зато я шверцуем за тебе, Србио. Боље позовите Сола. Боље позовите Сола.com Иш иген, модјору беседек. All you need to know about this place is that it is the worst place on earth. There are no redeeming qualities about the city, nor the people that live in it. That tenth circle of hell exists, and its name is Chachak. Now, it is a given that Serbia isn't just made out of Serbs from Serbia, but from other neighboring countries as well. One such case is with the Serbs from Bosnia. And much like the stereotypes Bosnians already have about them on the internet, the Bosnian Serbs also have the same ones presumed about them in Serbia, as well as some additional ones. The holier-than-thou Belgradians and Novi Saders will waste no time to tell you how brutish they are, how they embody everything wrong with Serbia today, starting with their excessive love of reality. TV. Imaš 20 kvadrata u guzici. Ajde, zaveži, bre. Koliko valjaš kvadrat? Rakunčino. Loki fascist nationalist ideas, an obsession with Russia's president, to their open brick houses built on the outskirts of the city without proper construction licenses, in total violation of zoning laws. However, others will tell you that they are the most fun and charismatic people they have ever met. Absolute party animals that can drink an entire pub dry and crack jokes that would make even and the hardest menopausal middle-aged woman bust a smile. There is no in-between. Either they're the most fun person you'll ever meet, or the biggest Serb that has ever served. In the south, much like in Vojvodina, the stereotype is again with the accent the people speak with. Usually it is presumed that the southerners from Serbia have a thick southern accent and don't know how to use the seventh Serbian case, locative, when speaking. Thus, they can sometimes sound like foreigners when speaking Serbian and are most usually associated with Macedonians and Bulgarians. For which everyone and their mothers loves to make fun of them while they stare back at you unamused. They're also thought of as the best cooks in the country, whose barbecue no one in their right mind can refuse. Except for, say, vegans. But that's why I said, no one in their right mind. If the Voivodinians have the Hungarians, the Easterners have the Romanians. And quite a bit of them. As a result, you can imagine everyone else in Serbia loves to call them Romanians and make jokes about Romanian stereotypes. XD! Romanian steel! Who's gonna get quicker to the wallet? The Romanian or the bacteria? Lamau, <laughs> Romanian workout! XD, raffle copter! <laughs> Seriously guys, the meme has been dead for over a year now. Just let it fucking rest. Alongside that, it is also presumed that Eastern Serbians delve into dark Wallachian magic, as it is a huge thing in that area. Thus, teenage girls and stay-at-home moms love nothing more than to annoy an Easterner to make them tell their fortune while reading out from a coffee cup or however else the female version of Crypto Bros practice Wicca. Before any witches get offended about my joke and use their crystals or magic stones to cast a spell on me, don't worry, I got you covered. My kidney stones are already killing me, so save yourself some effort. Anyways, much like the Southerners as well, they too carry a bit of an accent and have struggles with Serbian cases. Alongside this, the Eastern region is known for its mineral and ore wealth, because of which it has a shit ton of ambivalent about workers' rights and well-being, Chinese mines which pollute the air and water like there is no tomorrow. Thus it is presumed that the Eastern Serbian has a lifespan shorter than it takes for a match to burn out. But I'll be damned if those mines don't pay well. God damn. <laughs> 
In conclusion, Serbia is a fantastic land with many quirky characters and stereotypes. So if you're ever in the region, stop by for a party and meet some of them for yourself. Anyways, what do you think? Which stereotype is your favorite and which did I miss? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, click that subscribe button and if you really enjoyed it, become a member like these wonderful people. If you want to support me further, go on to theironicshop.com and buy yourself some of my merch like one of my shirts or board game. My name is Janos and you've watched Living Ironically in Europe. Hey, hey, why are you leaving?